Greetings, my friends. I'm Viking Brim from OutlawGamers.com with a Let's Play for Metal Gear Solid V, which is going to come as no surprise to anyone who's been keeping up with the Outlaw Gamer Radio podcast. You know I've been talking about this game obsessively for months. On the last episode of the show, I talked about how I have completed 100% of the side missions and 100% of the main story missions, and I'm going back now, and I'm getting 100% of the optional objectives finished in those main story missions. And I just set a challenge for myself where I was going to do the uh, the story missions, do 100% of the objectives, and get an S rank in a single playthrough. Which was working out fine until I hit mission number 9. And uh, that mission is is it's tough. There's a lot to do in that mission. There's a ton of optional objectives. There's a time limit. And it was the first mission I came across that I thought I was not going to be able to get it in one go, but I have figured out a way to do it, and that's what I'm going to be showing you now. Now, to be clear, there are plenty of people on YouTube that are doing this mission and getting 100% of the objectives in an S rank in one playthrough, but the difference is that they are destroying most of the armored vehicles in this mission, and I wanted to extract them with the Fulton, which makes it much more challenging. But, after thinking about it and playing around with it, I figured out a way to do it, and that's what I'm going to show you right now. So let's go ahead and get the mission started. The first thing that you need to know in, uh, in this method is you have to deploy from the ground, and you have to deploy from the ground right here, just south of the supply outpost and north of the Marcate Palace. Got to deploy from the ground right here in order to make this work. Now the other thing that's going to be different about the playthrough that I'm doing is I'm going for a perfect stealth playthrough. Because you get so many points from doing 100% of the objectives, it'll cancel out any uh, combat alerts or reflex mode, things that normally would penalize you. But you get so many points that you can get away with that, and, and people have figured that out. And consequently, in checking out the Let's Plays, the uh, the playing is, like, really sloppy. And so I don't want to do that. I want to do everything that I'm already going to do in this mission that's challenging, but I also want to play at that level of precision that I normally like to, which is perfect stealth, no kills, no reflex modes, no combat alerts, all that kind of thing. So keep that in mind if you're, if you're wondering why the hell I'm doing something the way I'm doing it, that, uh, that may factor into it. Now, speaking of why the hell I'm doing what I'm doing, the reason that you have to deploy from the ground is because you need this extra time as Miller is going through his, uh, his briefing here, he's, uh, he's talking and the mission doesn't actually start until the, the briefing is over. You can see the clock hasn't even started yet, but we've had a lot of time, a lot of travel time to uh, get in position, which is really important. Because time is everything in this mission, and especially here at the, uh, at the early stages. So basically what's going on here is you start off with two armored vehicles on the map. You've got one that's sitting stationary at La Marcate Palace, and then this one that's obviously in motion coming from uh, Waxen Barracks. And uh, you've got to get this vehicle... you got to get this one extracted. The other thing that you really have to do early on is you've got to get to one of the prisoners. Uh, one of the optional objectives is to rescue six prisoners one of whom is making his way up to the top of that mountain right now. And he's got four guards that are on his tail, and about four minutes and change into the mission, they're going to catch up with him and kill him. So, that guy has to be a priority right at the beginning, too. And So the real challenge here, the real time crunch in this method, is that at the very beginning of the mission, you've got to extract that one vehicle that's in motion, then you've got to race up the mountain, to get the uh, the prisoner that's escaping, and then you got to get back on the road and extract the other vehicles before they leave the mission area, and then you 
you lose access to them. But if you can do that, if you can get that done in the first few minutes, everything else is going to be pretty easy. Now the other prisoner that you have to worry about having a time limit yeah. attached is, uh, and you'll get warned about yeah. him, he's, it's one of the few, one of the few optional objectives yeah. you do get warned about, but he's on a jeep yeah. that's driving through the mission area, and you have to get him before the jeep leaves the mission area. Alright, so here's our prisoner yeah. here. If you look in the background there, you can see there's an armored vehicle driving by at the bottom of the mountain. That's good, that means we're pretty good on time, and since we are pretty good on time, I'm gonna try and take out the four guards who are chasing okay. him. Now this you don't have to do. You can just race back down the mountain and you can um, you can leave all this for uh, for another time, but it's possible to do it. And so I'm going to do it. And hopefully I'm not going to uh, pass out from my own sleeping grenades. All right. Let's get these guys Fultoned. Oh, come on. Oh, no, I don't want to get on the fucking horse. You gotta extract him. One of the things about this game that does bug me is some of the some of the button choices for certain things all being the same, that can uh, that can trip me up sometimes, like just there. Alright, so what I'm looking for is when I get onto the road here, I'm hoping that the nearer yeah. vehicle's about 400 meters, and the farther one's about 700. Yeah. Alright, that's good. Yeah. That's looking good. Yeah. So, yeah. didn't lose too much time with yeah. the whole mounting yeah. D-horse instead of yeah. extracting the guard. So, yeah. let's see. At this point, we've already completed yeah. one of the optional objectives, which yeah. is to extract those four... Yeah those four guards, and we've got yeah. one of our armored vehicles and one of our prisoners. So, a few things down, whole lot more to go. Speaking of prisoners, there is a prisoner that is in this river right here that we might catch a glimpse of, I don't know. There he is, right there. And we're going to, we're going to catch up with him soonish. For right now, though, yeah. let's just focus yeah. on yeah. catching up yeah. with that that far vehicle yeah. right there. I normally play yeah. this mission at night, which makes it yeah. considerably easier as yeah. far as, you know, like riding past guard yeah. outposts and not getting spotted. Yeah. But I figure it's also much less yeah. exciting to watch a, yeah. uh, a video on YouTube for 30 minutes in night vision green. I always try to stay on the right side of that yeah. truck because it seems like every time yeah. I go around the left side I get spotted like every yeah. time. Okay, we are doing yeah. fantastic. This is actually yeah. probably the closest I've ever gotten yeah. to that guy coming around that yeah. turn in all the times I've done this mission, yeah. so I'm not going to complain yeah. about anything because this is going yeah. great. All right, let's get over here. We're going to use D-Horse to create a little ambush. And I'm going to mosey on over behind this rock and lay in wait. I do kind of an ambush style for this stuff. I see a lot of people in the Let's Plays, they'll, they'll hide up behind a rock, they'll wait for the vehicle to pass by, They'll fire off a couple of shots, and that'll make the vehicle stop and start kind of looking for you, and then they fire off the shots, they just race to the vehicle, and as soon as it stops, they get there, and they fault in it out, and I can never seem to make it work. It seems like every time I try, fire off a couple shots, go racing towards the vehicle, and they always spot me running up. It just seems like I never, uh, I never have any luck with that, so consequently... I, uh, I use D-Horse as a roadblock and do it this way, just because I find it's uh, more reliable for me and my gorilla thumbs. Alright, for, uh, for this Jeep, it's coming through with the prisoner. I'm going to just use an EM run. 
It'll stun everybody in the Jeep. And I'm also going to uh, call D-Horse over, because I've done this a couple of times where D-Horse is in the middle of the road when they, uh, when they drive up and they stop and shoo him away. And the last thing that you want is for them to stop, because it just makes just makes everything take longer, and the absolute last thing you want happening in this mission is for anything to take longer. Alright, now, a lot of people will just go ahead and extract the jeep with the, uh, the prisoner on board, which, which will, it'll count as a prisoner extraction, but I like to, uh, I like to use the jeep as a bit of a roadblock. I've just noticed that uh, Snake's got flies swimming around, which means uh, I haven't been back to, uh, to Mother Base for a shower in a little while, so I guess I'll have to take care of that uh, once this mission's complete. All right, now once you extract that prisoner, he, uh, he tells you about uh, the fact that there is a armored vehicle at La Marcate Palace, which is rapidly closing on my position, I see. That seems to have happened faster than it normally does. It seems like I've usually got more more time to uh, to get set up for this. I'm not sure if I've... maybe I've inadvertently done something different, but it's just I've been... I've been ahead of the, uh, the clock throughout almost this entire mission, and... I'm definitely behind the clock on that one. Okay. So anyway, Snake's hygiene problems aside, let's go ahead and uh, finish getting set up here. So they've just told us about the uh, just told us about the truck that's coming in. So I'm going to set down an EM mine for that, and we'll get back here and get ready for this. All right, since we got a second here. Now, normally, these two vehicles end up coming into this little ambush zone at almost exactly the same time, but it seems like it seems like this one is quite a bit farther behind where it normally is. And then that vehicle that was coming from the supply outpost was quite a bit further ahead than I thought it was, so I don't know. All right, so what have we got going on here? We've got an, an armored vehicle that we've eliminated. Uh, we've extracted an armored vehicle... We have got the four prisoners searching for the soldier. We've got, or the four soldiers searching for the prisoner. We've got the two prisoners. Uh, I don't know if we would have scored the extract multiple fighting vehicles or gunships yet. And then obviously we'd have to... Uh, one of the objectives is to go the whole mission without getting a, uh, a resupply or calling on fire support. Which uh, is... is not really a problem. It's probably more of an issue if you're destroying the, uh, the vehicles because you have to be so... you have to be so... conscious of your ammo. Okay, that's interesting. I don't, I don't know if I've heard Miller say that before. Okay. 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 So, those last two vehicles, they're way down there. They're almost 2,000 meters away. So, since they are so far away, and I don't feel like uh, sitting here, or... More specifically, I don't feel like making you watch while I sit here for them to drive the entire map. Let's use the time. And we'll go uh, we'll go grab that prisoner that we saw in the river. Now you have to be careful because I think there are mines on that path right there, so you have to kind of avoid that. Or it might not be, I don't, I don't know, maybe it's not mined yet, but it is in the second half of the mission. I don't know, I, c I couldn't tell, but... Do yourself a favor, and uh, don't use that path. 
Yeah. Alright, they're still 800 meters in closing. Yeah, we're in pretty good shape here. Not too bad at all. Alright, so what's going to happen is... These are... These two are the last vehicles that we have to extract, and then we will have gotten 100% of the armored vehicles. And if you do that, if you... If you get 100% of the armored vehicles, then sort of a second... A second chain of the mission unlocks, in which the, uh, the Soviets send in three tanks and a helicopter to, uh, to come and get you. Three minutes remaining. And that forms one of the optional objectives. You have to extract the three tanks. So you got to get 100% of the vehicles extracted to even trigger the second half of the mission. So if you want to have any hope at all of getting uh, all the objectives, got to make sure and get all these vehicles, which uh, we're in good shape here. In terms of time, this is uh, this is not going to be not going to be an issue. The main thing I'm getting paranoid now is uh, I'm worried about worried about getting spotted by some guard in the outpost riding through the front. But uh, we will, we'll be okay. Okay. I'm gonna hold up here. Only two minutes remaining. I think this is a canter. We'll just canter. All these guys are taking this turn here. Now we're going to get after him and seal the deal. Okay, so I left the... Uh, what the hell just happened? That's why I left that, uh, that truck parked there, just in case for some reason they blew through the Jeep roadblock. Alright, now they blew up the truck, but hopefully the, uh, yeah, it left the, uh, it left the rocket launcher. Which is good, uh, because we're gonna need that rocket launcher here in just a second. Alright, let's go ahead and get the jeep out. Okay, so ostensibly, mission's done. Except... And you're the target. Yeah, there you go. Push the Soviets a little too far. Boss, those Soviets are a threat to the guerrillas. You can bet there'd be a bonus in it if you take them out. All right, so now objectives are complete, so you can leave the area if you want. Your choice, boss. Now we got real trouble. Now the reason that I like this part of the map for my uh, my ambush zone is because it it puts you in a good position to just go ahead and deal with this helicopter <laughs> right at the uh, right at the beginning of the sort of second leg here and uh, that way you just don't have to worry about it which is nice uh, Alright, so I'm going to go, let's see, I'm done, I don't need the rocket launcher anymore, so let me go get my sniper rifle. It also puts you in a, uh, in a really good position to extract one of the three tanks. Which uh, we are going to go and get in position for right now. Now, these three tanks are all going to kind of be hanging around one of the outposts. So this one uh, is coming down from the north here. You got this one over near Wak Send, and then this one at La Marcate. So let's take stock real fast. We've got three of the prisoners at this point, so there's three more of those. We've got the gunship. So we've got three tanks, three prisoners, and then uh, we just got to complete the mission without getting 
a resupply or fire support from a helicopter. Oh, and also one of the objectives is to uh, to get the the rocket launcher off the uh, the truck, which obviously we did that. And no, fortunately, down. they make that they make that pretty hard to screw up. If if the truck gets destroyed, yeah. the rocket launcher gets left behind. If you yeah. fault in the truck, the rocket launcher gets left behind. So it's yeah. it's not too bad. Okay, now sneaking past the outpost is a little bit more difficult this time because the guard there's going to be a guard on that back door, and uh, he will spot you. If you uh, ride by too fast. Alright, so that's good. That's really, really good. No problems there. Now, basically, it's just down to timing at this point. These uh, these tanks, they're kind of doing like a patrol route. And they... Uh, I was not trying to get off the horse, but thank you. Uh, <laughs> gorilla fingers. I, I warned you about this. Okay, so this uh, this tank up here, they're they're on this kind of uh, patrol pattern, and they stop two times in in that pattern, and basically give you a really good window of opportunity to snatch them. And so that is what we're going to try to do now. Yeah, he's. I think this is going to work out good. I think that we're basically going to get to get to this guy just as he yeah. is stopping. Yeah. Yeah. So this is going to work yeah. out just fine. Yeah. 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 I've tried doing this mission with D. Walker, yeah. which I, I think that D. D. Walker is a little bit faster than yeah. D. Horse. But, uh, yeah. He's also quite a bit more difficult to control at high speed. So, uh, I haven't really, uh... I haven't really, uh, tried too hard with that. It's, uh... It's much, much easier to do with D-Horse. Now, one of the escape prisoners is right there. We'll go get her in just a second. But first, okay, that's two of our three tanks down. Subject on board. Leave the rest to us. Here is prisoner number four of six. She's actually wandering through that uh, that little valley right over there in the background. If you deploy from a helicopter in this location okay. over here, she'll Subject be right there. behind you when you deploy. Which is, uh, actually, she was the first prisoner in this mission that I discovered just out wandering. Like, like that was the first time that I kind of realized that, oh, there are prisoners just out wandering. And at first I, I assumed that the four guards were after her, and then I actually had to go online and kind of look up the mission details and figure out what the hell was going on. Which, I... I don't know, like, I, I kind of have mixed feelings about that, because on the one hand, like, I guess I dig the fact that the secondary objectives and things are not totally obvious, and that the game challenges you a little bit to figure this stuff out, but at the same time, some of it is insane. Okay. I caught sight of that guard on the second floor. He and the guard up on the third floor are the the real impediments to pulling this off smoothly. But I think that he was on his way out of my way, and if I can do this, then I don't think that guard on the third floor is going to be too much of a problem either. Alright, so let me just, uh, let's toss this guy down and extract him. All right, prisoner five of six dealt with. Now you got to be careful because I'm pretty sure there, are, yeah, there are mines right down there. So you got to be uh, got to be a little bit cautious on your exit route there. All right, 
Let's take a look at the map here. Okay, so that tank is now... He's on the far side of Waxen, so... We're going to... We're going to try and get in position. This is actually... Basically, I'm just going to retrace my steps from the very start of the mission. And get set up to... Extract him... Not too far from where we extracted the very first... Oh, snap. Don't want to get spotted. Actually, we're going to extract him not too far from where we extracted the first armored vehicle on the west side of Waxen Barracks. So, let's get over there and make this happen. There's a path over there that you can take, but, I don't know, I'm just, uh... Now that I'm so far into this mission, and <laughs> in case, uh, in case you hadn't imagined this, I have had to start this mission a couple of times because, uh, I've screwed up stupid things like, you know, extracting the, those four soldiers up on top of the mountain or something like that. Uh, but, uh, anyway, the point is that there's a path that you can take over there, but now I'm I'm kind of getting paranoid. I'm so far into it. I'm so far, or I'm so close to uh, to finishing that I'm uh, starting to not to want to take any chances. But I mean, truthfully, this is not uh, this isn't that bad. All right, so yeah, see, like right down there, that tree is right there. That's where that's where we got that first vehicle. So this is going to be good. Alright, let's see. There he is. Alright, we'll leave D-Horse here and, uh... This rock makes for, uh... Makes for a good ambush point. Okay. Three of three tanks extracted. He's coming too. Roger that. That leaves us with one prisoner to take care of. And actually, I'm going to turn on the night vision goggles because I'm pretty sure there's some landmines somewhere on this path. And I would rather not get blowed up at this point. Yep, there they are, right there. Seriously. The things that... The rocks that you can and can't run over in this game is something of a mystery to me. Alright. So, basically... Now, we just have to run an infiltration mission on uh, Walks in Barracks. That's the interesting thing about this mission. I think that's one of the reasons it's one of my favorites, is that it's it's really... I mean, it's complicated. Uh, it, like, the optional objectives, like extracting that one prisoner at La Marcate or extracting this prisoner, like, those are missions in unto themselves. Main story missions. And they're just tacked on as optional objectives in this one, which is... It's cool. I mean, just, you know, the challenge of it and everything is cool. Alright, let's see. What time is it? Uh, it's going to be sundown pretty soon, which... may work to our advantage. Uh-huh. Yeah, we got a guy... up on top of that roof. He is... That guy is a bit of... He can be a bit of a problem. Oh, snap. Hi, how you doing? Okay. Now... 
one of my sort of I don't know one of my one of my unwritten rules is I enjoy the challenge of trying to infiltrate a guard post with zero residual presence when possible or and also when I'm not recruiting when I'm not like actively looking to uh, to get guys recruited for uh, for diamond dogs so that is how I'm playing this basically I want to be in be out and not have anybody know I was even here until they discover that they're a prisoner light okay gotta start being quiet now because there are usually two if not three guards roaming around down here This guy, I am going to take out because he's going to be blocking my escape route. Back is turned. Okay. Yeah. Timing working out pretty good here. Prisoner six extracted. This way. Either somebody heard the fault in extraction, and I don't know, maybe they've maybe they found that guard I knocked out. I'm not sure. I know it's not going to matter here in a second, though, because I'm not going to be around. Yeah, I probably heard the fault in extraction. Okay. That's it. All we gotta do now is get out of the mission area. is 
it. Done and done. Mission number nine, extracting all armored vehicles. Perfect stealth, no kills. Almost got away without even having to uh, choke out a guard. Which, you're probably like rolling your eyes and saying like, what the hell difference could that make? But it's pride, it's pride, you see. This is, this is my disease, it is my sickness. And uh, that's it. That's one of the things about this game that I love so much. Lauren and I talked on one of the shows about the the failure range in uh, Metal Gear Solid and how it's it's a game that really it's a game that really adapts well to different difficulty levels and, and I guess different play styles in terms of like what you want to get out of it in terms of a challenge. It can really accommodate you and. I don't know, it's one of those games that, at least to me, it kind of invites the sort of, um... Mission complete there you go. Now. You're gonna tell stories about this one, boss. Booyah. And I, I've since I've completed the mission before, like, I've already got the patches and everything from it. Like, you get the tank, and you get, uh, you get the trapezoid, the trapezoid, uh, metal part. But anyway, I just, I love this game. I, I love the mechanics. I love how challenging you can make it. I mean, you know, that's, you could just kind of set challenges for yourself, the, the way that I'm talking about doing, and you can just have fun with it, and it can be... You know, if if you feel like doing something like really, really tedious, and oh yeah, there's there's the flies. Time to go back to base and get a get a shower. If you feel like being really, really tedious about it, then uh, then you can do that. And if you feel like being a little bit more laid back and and leisurely, you know, you can do that. And you don't have to go in and adjust a difficulty level. You just have to. You just have to play differently, or you have to sort of take advantage of some of the game mechanics, some of the, the weapons and items and things like that that you have available to you. It's just, I think it's it's one of the most well-thought-out game experiences I've ever had. So anyway, that's it. I'm done. Thanks for uh, checking out my Let's Play of uh, The Phantom Pain. There's going to be more of this to come. I think I'm going to maybe do, I don't know, like almost kind of like a guide, like sort of like the insane person's perfectionist guide to completing 100% of the story missions in Metal Gear Solid. I might change the name. I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be honest with you. I'm not married to it. So if you got any suggestions on that or any comments on this Let's Play or anything else that you'd like to see from me, please feel free to leave me a comment below. I really appreciate you checking out the video, assuming that you've waited this whole time and you're still listening and actually have watched the entire thing. I, I appreciate that. But anyway, thanks very much for checking this out. Uh, be sure to check me out every week over on OutlawGamers.com where you can uh, catch the latest episode of Outlaw Gamer Radio with myself and uh, Mr. Lauren Baumgarten at the helm. And I'll see you next time here on YouTube for another Let's Play, probably featuring Metal Gear Solid V: The Phantom Pain. Until then, may the Norse be with you.